Hello everyone, my name is Min Kim, and today I wanted to share the story and my journey of how I achieved my goals of getting my dream jobs at companies like Blizzard Entertainment and Google. I wanted to share the story with everyone because I feel like there are probably a lot of folks who have a similar journey to mine, and they're just at a different point in the timeline. And I'm hoping that with some of this information, it will give people enough hope, inspiration, as well as maybe a few pointers and tips on what to do to get there. So I'll start off with my background. The reason I'm a computer scientist and the reason I got into computer science was because I love video games. I started to remember playing games like River Raid on the ColecoVision, then eventually going to the NES, the Super NES, then falling in love with computer games. And I still remember the first computer game that really hit me was Warcraft, which was a real-time strategy game at that time. And the biggest thing about that game that hit me was when I looked at the units on the screen, I could actually start seeing like the data structures and the code that was controlling the things. And I knew that this was what I wanted to do. So with that, I was really blessed because I wasn't aware of any free or open source compilers at the time. And my parents were generous enough to go ahead and get me my first compiler. Also, my high school had a computer science course. So with all of this, I at least had my start starting. I also went to a community college shortly after high school, and then I went to University of Houston to get my degree. I got a bachelor's degree in computer science and a minor in mathematics. Now, my overall GPA in college was only a 2.9. So if any of, any of you are demoralized because your history or your background is not enough, your background and your history does not define you. What defines you is what you do going forward. While I was actually in college, I actually happened to get my first programming job. Now, it was paid near minimum wage, but it was a programming job, and I was over the roof. I was so excited and so happy that I had this opportunity. And I had a great mentor there. And this mentor, I only really listened 20, 20 to 30% of the time because I, I still had that arrogance, that narcissism when I was young that I knew everything and that there wasn't really much for me to gain from other folks. So I went through my career. And I did actually have a lot of really engaging and really challenging projects there, and it grew me tremendously. And I was really thankful for all of the opportunities that I had. During that time as well, I also got a chance to apply for a video game company in Houston. And it was interesting because they, they rejected me, and it was rightfully so. Not only did I not have enough video gaming experience, even though I was trying to go in for a junior, I also did not have enough math background. And I would never even took this as a lesson, but the questions that they offered in that, I could have done more research. I could have tried to grow myself from that, but instead I let that hit me. I let that demoralize me to thinking that video games may just not be in my future. Also during that time while I was at SBPA, I also had this unique opportunity where a contact of a contact somehow was able to give me a phone screening interview with Google. And I thought, how incredible was this? And as I kind of prepared for that Google interview, they were generous enough to talk me through it, to hear my background. But they said, with my degree, as at that time, Google had hired mostly just PhDs. And also with my GPA, it just wasn't really strong. But they were still generous enough to give me some time to ask me some of the intro phone screening questions. And I bombed them. It still wasn't enough for me to click to realize that. I could have used those examples again for my growth. Instead, I just kind of took it as a demoralizing note and just stayed focused on the role that I had, thinking that those were kind of my boundaries. Now, SBPA was still a great company. I did learn a lot and I did grow. And from that, I was able to actually go on to another company called Computer Science Corporation. And that was another fantastic opportunity met a lot of great individuals, had a, had an opportunity to grow my role to doing more things in terms of system design. And it was just all the long hours spent at any of these places wasn't necessarily just to help the company thrive, but it was to give me experience into growing myself. Now, during that time, while it was also Computer Science Corporation, I fell in love with the game called World of Warcraft. And I remember I spent hundreds of in-game days, 24-hour cycles in the game. Maybe not too proud of it. Maybe I am. I'm not sure. Anyways, I, I really loved playing it. And I also loved that I had an opportunity to be a guild leader. And I thought that being a guild leader had similar, similar like analogs to being a leader professionally. So 
At this time, I started applying for Google regularly every year, and I updated my cover letter thinking that I would take some of these things like the experience that I grew with and the experience of a guild leader. However, I still got zero responses back from Google. That's okay. Eventually, I then had another opportunity to get new jobs from all the experiences that I got from Computer Science Corporation. And at this point in time, this is like now about eight, nine years into my career, I was in this situation where three companies had given me an offer letter. Two of them had actually said that I was a senior person, I would be a great contributor to their team, and they actually offered a significantly higher pay. One offer, though, said I was okay, just enough, and what they saw in me was my ability to learn, and they thought that they would have a ton of opportunities to grow me. Now, I took that job because that's maybe my personality type. I'm a little bit of a masochist. I thought I will, I'm willing to take a step back so that I can grow myself as much as possible. And I actually, to this day, still feel like it was one of the best decisions of my life. So I got this job at JP Morgan and it was incredible. Within the first year, they said that I should go up, come up to New York City. And it was an amazing opportunity. And I, I took that opportunity and I went to New York and my career did thrive from that point. I had a lot of great mentors. I had a lot of great challenging programming projects. And I also then found out a lot of unique, difficult social engagements that needed to be overcome as well. And I took that all as opportunities that helped me grow continuously. Now, at this point, I started developing a lot of leadership skills. And I remember that this also the company would gave me my first opportunity of being a real technology leader at a company. And I took that with open arms and I fully embraced that challenge. So during all this, I, I did still actually apply to Google about every year, trying to see if it was enough, if my experiences were enough, and still there was no response. Now, at some point in time before the launch of StarCraft II, another real-time strategy, a fantastic one, I wanted to go back to StarCraft 1, re-defeat re all the campaigns, do a little bit of PvP to just make sure that I could brush up my skills in StarCraft. And I saw an advertisement in the Battle.net client. And it would, the Battle.net client is a client where you could chat and get into video games with matching with other people. And there was an advertisement for, do you want to work at Blizzard? And I said, well, of course I do. So I decided I was going to go ahead and apply for it. I clicked on the banner, made the application. And they responded to me saying that from all the experience and growth that I had throughout my career, and I believe at this time it might have been maybe 12 or 13 years of uh, software engineering experience, they said I was at least worth having a interview in Blizzard headquarters. Now, I was also freshly married at that time. My wife was a resident of uh, her medical program. And residency is a little special thing. You have to match with the program and it's actually incredibly difficult to move. So we're in New York City. I'm flying over to California to get an interview with Blizzard Entertainment. She was very supportive and said, of course, she'd support me no matter what I want to do. And we'd have to make really difficult decisions about long distance or she would have to find like the magical unicorn and have an open residency spot in California but she still supported me to say, go interview, follow your dreams. So I went to California and I went to the interview and it was incredible. The interview was great, incredibly challenging questions, fantastic team members that I got to meet. Seeing the campus was amazing. I got to see the, the Blizzard Museum near the headquarters center. I got to see, walk through the halls of where they made Warcraft, Diablo, Starcraft, all the posters, banners, statues as well as the desks showed so much culture. There were desks that had bottles of Mountain Dew colored lining around the cubicle. They had all these desks that just exuded the personalities of the people there, all the creative people that were there. And I was like, this is so amazing, I can't wait. And I went back and I remember talking to the team members of the company and saying like, this is exactly what I want and I'm so thrilled to have this interviewing opportunity. So I found out when I got back that I was indeed sent an offer letter and I was so ecstatic. And my wife, as she committed, she said she was going to look for another residency opportunity. And unfortunately, nothing came upon, 
Nothing came up. And I remember the hiring manager at the time was a great individual who continued to reach out to me and say like, hey, this job is still open on the plate. And I felt so excited that I finally was able to achieve my possible dream of getting to Blizzard Entertainment. Now, I didn't go to Blizzard Entertainment at the time. And again, I prioritized my family. And I, I would pick that a million times over again because my family is absolutely worth it. And JP Morgan still is a great company as well. So I stayed at JP Morgan. My wife finished her residency. I continued to grow. I continued to apply to Google. And Google still continued to reject me year, years and years going on. And at one point, I remember I also had this fantastic team member. And we were doing some paired programming, trying to figure out some problems. And this individual said, man, you're like one of the smartest people I knew. And it was such a fantastic compliment. I'm still really thankful for that. And especially coming from a background of community college and 2.9 GPA, hearing that, it really, it really, really motivated me. And I was, I was honored that they would even make such a compliment. Now, this person happened to have coworkers that worked at Google, previously Barnes and Noble. And this, again, this individual was incredibly smart and talented as well. So their, their coworkers knew that if he had a reference, and that reference spoke highly of me, then they would think that that was a great reference. And my team member reached out to his previous manager to say that this is one of the smartest people he's ever met. You've got to hire him for Google. And Google has a particular referral system where if you do know somebody there and they will attest that you are one of the top people that they know, they're happy to bring you in for that interview. And sure enough, right after that individual gave my reference, I was finally given an opportunity to interview at Google. My Google's going off right now. Now, once I actually got into that interview there, it was a really entertaining and challenging experience. It was about five hours of really difficult interviews. One was kind of a breezy one with lunch. But I felt really good about how it went because I felt like I at least answered each of the problems. Now, when I came back, and I was awaiting the response. They called me and said, Hey, well, unfortunately, this time we're just, we're not going to move forward with you. And from all of my previous experiences, I realized this time I'm going to do something a little bit differently. This time I'm going to ask, what's your feedback? Where did I mess up? Where did I, where, where could I have gone better? And you don't have to give me the names. You don't have to give me the specific problems because that might be leading to who it would be involved with. Just, just some directional feedback of what I could do. Now, I did remember some of the programming questions. And of course, I don't remember any of the names. And to me, again, it wasn't about, it wasn't about a witch hunt. It was about what am I going to do to be better? And that recruiter said, well, usually that feedback is pretty private. So we don't really hand that information out. But I, I believe that that person was just an incredible person to try to find and put, do extra due diligence for me to help me understand where I can grow. So they called me a little while back and they said, you know, as a senior individual, and I think at this time, maybe I had been working for about like 15, 16 years. They just felt like that I wasn't, even though I might have answered the questions, I didn't answer them fast enough and I didn't answer them in an optimized enough way. And I thought that was actually still a great answer. And I remember my good friends would tell me like, mate, you're too good for them. They don't deserve you. And, and I always appreciate my friends. But what I realized, what I internalized at that point was I've got the signals. I'm going to start doing what it's going to take. I'm going to make the change in myself to grow to being the right fit. So I remember at this point, and you can look at my history of YouTube videos, there's some videos that I made and I started taking on all these problems from this uh, website called Top Coder. And there they had all these kind of standard computer science problems, but with all levels of difficulty. And I would practice them and I would practice them, but I wouldn't just practice them. I thought back about the interview that was there at Google. And I remembered that part of the process was to draw on the board and to speak through the, the actual problem. So that's what I did. I created YouTube videos where I looked at the problem and then I spoke to the solution. And I did that over and over for a bit until I started getting better and better at it. Now, what I didn't realize again was all of this work wasn't again just to get to Google. It was to make me better. And at that time, I also then had this opportunity that kind of came in front of me, which was to be in a startup. And I've always wanted to try the startup life. So I thought this was a fantastic opportunity. Let me go chase this. 
So I did, and it was probably some of the most fun that I've had in my entire career. And being in a situation where there's no structure, no stability, I, I kind of make the analogy where working at any of these other great companies is like doing a marathon. You feel very accomplished for what you do. It's very difficult. And if you have to stop and you try again next time, that's okay. There's a lot of forgiveness. But in a marathon, it's like running from a, in a startup, it's like running from a bear. You, you basically cannot stop. You have to do everything. Otherwise, the company runs out of money and there's nothing after that. Incredibly entertaining, incredible, incredibly educational. I, I really learned so much from it and I'm, I'm actually still so thankful for that experience. At this time, we were building the team out. We were building the technology out and it was, it was amazing. Also, at the same time, again, I think about the other components of my life. My family was growing at this time. I had my first child and I just actually had my second child at this point. And we realized that in New York City, this was actually really hard to have multiple children in the city. So at some point, my wife and I, my wife and I decided, let's start looking elsewhere. And when we started looking elsewhere, we started looking really elsewhere. We thought maybe not just the suburbs of Manhattan, but maybe let's, let's explore other places. And then it kind of dawned on me because also that manager that was at Blizzard, he gave me a call and he said, hey, you know what? California weather's still fantastic. Come think about it. So I gave him a ring and I said, hey, if you have an opportunity, I'd love to be able to head over to Blizzard again. And this might be the right time. So I got a chance to interview out there. My wife also interviewed out there. She got her job in like two seconds. Being an OBGYN, it was like so easy for her to find a new role because she's fantastic too. I was actually rejected at Blizzard the very first time. Well, not the first time, I guess technically like the nth time, but I was, I was rejected that time when I interviewed, even with that manager who was willing to hire me, just because there was another team that had the role that was open. And it came a little bit of the shock and a surprise and I figured, what, what was I going to do? And I thought I was, am I going to move with no job? And so I, I reached out to other folks and I reached out to other team members who were also looking for a position. And I interviewed with other other groups there. And fortunately, I was able to finally get that offer letter again. And then I worked for Blizzard Entertainment. And it was incredible. It was absolutely everything that I pictured it would be. I still remember its orientation day. I remember there was a question and answer, or there was a series where everyone did an introduction. And they would tell a little bit about themselves, where they're from, what they professionally do, and something unique about themselves. And I remember... One individual said their names and where they're from, what they do, but then they also said, I also like to LARP. So for those of you who don't know LARPing, you can go ahead and take a look and look it up. However, it's an acronym for LARP. Uh, but everybody in that room knew what it was. Everybody got up and cheered. And I was, I knew it once I saw that. I was like, dude, I'm around my people. I, I love the culture of geeks and nerds. And people who are just really passionate about that space. So I was like, this is, this is it. This is home. And it was fun. It was so much fun. I remember going through it and again, engaging with a lot of great people and learning so much, um, being able to work with such great teams. And at the same time, what was really interesting was even while I was at that startup, now Google, instead of me reaching out to Google every year, Google kind of reached out every so often and said, Hey, if you'd like to interview, we'd still like to be able to give you a chance to interview. And I thought, hmm, it's really interesting. So I realized I wanted to get it off my bucket list. I wanted to prove that I could be one of the top engineers in the world. And I truly believe that the engineers at Google are some of the best in the world. And so I decided to go ahead and apply when they called me while I was at Blizzard but just to prove, just to mark off that bucket list that I was good enough. So when I went back into the interview, same process, five heavy interviews with a lot of, lot of programming questions and then the, the nice little lunch interview. And this time they actually sent me an offer letter and it was incredible. I wasn't even sure what to do. And honestly, I was actually really, really torn of what decision to make. And I just, I was sitting there for days and not responding to the offer letter because I really love Blizzard Entertainment. I really loved working for that gaming company and I really respect Google. And I really wanted to show prove that I can be worthy of Google. So, but it was just an incredibly difficult decision. 
And the other difficult decision that should have been obvious to, to most other folks is that Google pays tremendously more than Blizzard. So I didn't know if it was right to leave the company that I love just because the money's better. And when the recruiter called me, I remember telling her I wasn't sure which decision to make. And I said, imagine you meet somebody. They're smart, they're funny, they're kind, they're beautiful, they treat you well, you're happy, and everything's just great. Now, imagine that you meet somebody about two years later, and they're smart, funny, they're kind, they're beautiful, they treat you well, you're happy, and, and they're rich. What, what decision can you make? Is it right? Now, fortunately, I have the wisdom of my wife. And she said, this analogy is great for people, but terrible for companies. And the reality is, when we make a vow or a commitment, not even just in marriage, but to our friends, we make it a, we make a bi-directional commitment to each other. We say, we'll be, I'll be kind to you. You'll be kind to me. I will treat you with respect because you treat me with respect. Companies, when you make that commitment to them and you're signing your commitment, they also in their contract have something that says that they can also fire you at will. So at that point, then it's kind of like an easy decision where you realize they're absolutely different. So with the wisdom of my wife, I realized as much as I love Blizzard, I had to do what's best for my family and it was still going to be great for me. Now, about six and a half, seven years later, I, or I guess almost seven years now at this point, it's been, I've been having this amazing journey at Google and I've proven myself in terms of my career growth and taking on really incredible challenges. So here I am in this part of my journey. And I think the main messages that I hope that some of you can take from this is one, don't give up. When you're rejected, regardless of what your background is, regardless of what your history is, those don't define you. Do not give up. You only fail when you quit. Then the next thing is, remember that as you work all those extra hours or you work really hard to achieve some of those difficult tasks, whether it's for a company or for your personal projects, those aren't there just to achieve the successes of those projects, but those are there to help you grow. Those are there to help you become stronger. The third thing is, there's a lot of knowledge and support that's already available around. Look into books, videos, classes, and friends that are there. I am also currently in a place where I want to start giving now. So if anybody is looking for some support, some tips, a little bit of my time to help grow in their journey or to understand where they are, please feel free to message me. Otherwise, I hope you find this video useful. If not to yourself, then maybe to someone you know. And I wish you the best in your journey. Thanks a lot.